Uh, hey guys, this is Vapor Graphics from YouTube. I'm going to walk you through the creation of an abstract 3D render in Cinema 4D. Uh, keep in mind, this is Cinema 4D Studio R12. I do believe you can do this in previous versions, or but the layout might look the same. So uh, I'm sure the the wording is similar. So you shouldn't have much problem with that. Uh, yeah, let's begin. Uh, first, you want to take a sphere and go to the segments down to three or one if it lets you but I think three is the least um, second what you want to do is make it editable and then click the, uh, the polygon tool next you can either go to structure and matrix extrude or just right click it lets you and then matrix extrude the, uh, the settings you want to put in here are 20, 20, 350, and that's on the move, so do that to move. On scale, you want all three of them to be 90, and in different versions of Cinema 4D, the, uh, the scale and the move, these things might be going vertically, not instead of horizontally. This is going to be 50, 35, 43. And variation, make it initial. And then these you want to uh, you want to make this 20. This one's going to be uh, 120. Make this negative 70. And make this uh, 80. Let's say 80. Or 90. Let's pull 90. Let's hit apply. And you're gonna have this uh, this guy right here going every which way. Looks kind of good right now, but we'll pretty it up. Next, you want to click this up right up here, the uh, the live selection. Then hold down Shift and click about uh, six or seven different little po polygons. And you want to go to structure, matrix extrude, and then hit apply. And you got more guys going every which way. Okay. Next, what you're going to do is create a hypernerves. The subdivision editor is going to be one, and the subdivision renderer is going to be two. Oh, and keep in mind, I live beside a, a busy street, so I apologize. That annoys you. Um, yeah, keep it like that, and then put the sphere inside the hypernerves. Click on the hypernerves and make it editable, because now we're going to uh, be extruding the separate polygons. Uh, click to the side here so you deselect the highlighted polygons from before. Fucking motorcycles and trucks outside. They annoy me. Anyways, now we're going to uh, extrude the extrude these. You're going to right click, extrude, uh, uncheck preserve groups, and hit apply. Now you got this entire thing selected, and it's not going to be extruded that much. But now this is going to make us able to uh, double them, and it's going to look pretty cool. So, right click, double. Do not unclick preserve groups. Make this linear like was before. And hit apply. Get some time. Alright. So now we got got it looking like that. You click it like put it here, it's gonna look kinda kinda funky. Right now it it, uh, it looks really um, what's the word? It doesn't look crisp enough. It just kind of looks like some sort of weird ass texture going on. You can keep it like that if you like it, but uh, it's, it's up to you. I don't really like it that much, so I'm going to go to the effects. I'm going to go to explosion, or whatever you call the modifiers. I'm going to put the explosion into the hyper nerves and the strength at one. I'm bring the speed down a bit. Actually, a lot. I prefer to have it at about 
two, I guess. Angle, bring that down. And randomness, you can bring down a little bit. Don't be afraid. You can bring down a lot, actually. Who cares? All right now, we've got these square little. Looks like the polygons are extremely shrewd now. This is pretty much the effect I was going for. Alright, now, um, just rendering this out by itself looks kind of boring. So, we can add a couple more. Then move it around. Oopsies. Make sure you have the uh, model tool selected. Then you can move this around. You can rotate it however you like. Place it wherever you like. I don't really care. It's up to you. It's abstract. Um, and by the way, this reason this looks all uh, scrunched up is because my computer's resolution is messed up. And I have to change it before I record. So, that's why that happened. Alright, I kind of like that there. Pretty nice. Um, okay. Now you render that out. Looks a lot better. More, more shit to it. Kind of looks high tech or alien, alienish, an alien life form, I guess you could say. We'll group these together. All G, and I'm going to add a slight bend to them. So select the mode, put it to unlimited. And then you can adjust the angle a bit, adjust the strength, and give it some of that. I don't know. I think it kind of gives it more of a gives more of a life to it. Also, you can add twist if you want. I wouldn't recommend it, but like I said, it's all it's all up to you. Again, go to unlimited and adjust the angle however you want. The reason I don't like it that much because it stretches the polygons out. And I'll render it out for you here. See, it doesn't really look good right here and other parts like this. But, like I said, it's up to you. Bring that down maybe to like 3, 4. Alright, 4 is good. Um, now, coloring, lighting, materials, doesn't really matter, I guess. We can uh, <coughs> just make our own material real quick. Like, just make it just a dark red. Specular off. Add some reflection for now. Put it down really low. It doesn't need to be a lot. Uh, also with this guy. Yeah, this is just for the purpose of the tutorial. Um, Alright. Actually, no, fuck it. Let's not have any reflection. Sorry for my swearing. I'm just... What I do. Uh, actually, let's bring that right down to here. Oopsies. Yeah, bring that down to here. Okay. Like this is all to you, remember. So if you have your own specific materials you like for this stuff, then go ahead, feel free to use that. Now we're gonna add a light source, and the light source on its own doesn't look really good. So what we're going to let's use. So center this however you like. Bring it up, put it down. I don't give a crap. To be totally honest. I'm going to show you how to do volumetric lighting if you don't already know how that's done. Put a null object, so. Here. Now, if you render this out, it still looks pretty bad. Um, let's put the intensity up. Alright, cool. Um, Alright, volumetric lighting, if not a lot of you people know, it's actually a really nice tool to use. We don't use it yet. We'll put the shadow to uh, soft and visible light to volumetric, and then we'll just increase the size of this to where it's engulfing the entire thing. Uh, move it over here, and I'll show you the effect this creates real quick. So, oopsies, oh, it doesn't look really good. Hold up. Let's actually move it closer this way. Now make sure you don't have a, your camera out too far or else you'll see that light kind of creates a really crappy effect. So we'll zoom right in to about here. Render it out. And you can just get the lights coming through. Uh, remember, if you, even if you don't like that, you can still bring the intensity right down
move this over here and the light kind of creates a really cool effect like it's being blocked up by the render itself which I think is really cool, it looks really nice and you could also, don't forget, you can change the color of the light to whatever the hell you want I think it looks good with pretty much anything this kind of creates a little like aqua effect but it's got to be brighter make sure it's kind of near the white side because then all around you just see more of your actual abstract render itself and uh... yeah that's for the uh, that's for the render you can use your own kind of render settings i'll just quickly explain mine if you want i'll have them at nice basically i have it saved to png but you can do jpeg or whatever you can add the a picture to the background if you want if that's what you do i never really do that you can uh... add some color corrections global illumination is on default and I have object glow on I don't really know what it does but I have it on anyways and I'll take over render to while right now but I guess I'll do it anyways for you, for you guys for the brightness and stuff a bit oh wait also depth I gotta go over depth there's different ways to put depth into an actual render um, if you zoom in using your left click you go right near the middle and then right click it and then zoom out it gives you perspective so like more of a perspective view and then you can render that and you have your uh, you have your little artificial depth created and yeah so I'm gonna delete this and I'll be back once it's finished render okay so uh, here's our uh, that was our render for a second, I don't know what, you, what just happened. Well, let me show you render it up. I think it looks really cool. I like the uh, the way these kind of look like tentacles or, or what the fuck? Yes. But yeah, I like how it looks kind of like tentacles and how uh, it looks kind of like alieny, kind of spaceship-like or what have you. But uh, yeah, there you go. Um,